Hello and welcome to Council Conversations. It's my pleasure to share this opportunity to introduce you to the men and women who serve as our elected body and represent you, the residents of Greensboro. Join us as we take you outside the four walls of this council chamber and visit different locations throughout our great city that represent initiatives of particular interest to our city council. Again, welcome to Council Conversations. Welcome back to this edition of Council Conversations. Today we are in beautiful downtown LaBauer Park and we're talking with Councilman Justin Outling. Thank you, Councilman Outling. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. So when we look at LaBauer Park, this is an example of economic development. And when we talk about economic development, there are many challenges that the city has had to overcome in order to bring larger corporations into the area. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. I think Greensboro, like many cities in the southeast, experienced a market decrease in the number of jobs as a result of the move from manufacturing and producing goods in the United States uh, versus overseas. So Greensboro in the past several years has really focused on economic development and has been discriminating in terms of its attention um, to the details and the things that actually drive our economy and job growth. And so those things being primarily uh, education, infrastructure, quality of life, and public safety. Okay, and speaking of job growth, that means higher paying jobs. You go around through different pockets of our city and you'll see that there are some populations that look depressed, some areas that are lower socioeconomic. So how do you see the overall framework and just the futuristic view of our city changing if we were able to get more higher paying jobs as an option? Sure, you know, I see Greensboro as being on the path to making strategic investments that really drive our job growth and really benefits everyone in our city. You know, two things we need in Greensboro, more jobs and better paying jobs. And I think, you know, as we continue to work strategically, you'll continue to see there be more jobs. For example, uh, Corvo moving its headquarters here. And you'll also see those jobs pay more, which benefits us all, both as taxpayers and neighbors. Okay, and then of course we have a high student population and they are always going to be looking for jobs and our goal should be to keep them here. If we could get them here to come to school, then let's get the return on that investment. That's right. Greensboro has some six colleges or universities as well as a professional school uh, with Elon School of Law. So we do a great job of attracting really talented, bright and capable people here. The challenge has always been uh, for Greensboro and other cities alike, how do we keep them here? And generally, the first way you do that is by having jobs for them to find a way to support themselves, grow their families, and grow our community. So that's really been Greensboro's focus for the last several years, helping to support institutions of higher learning as they and us uh, attempt to keep these talented individuals in our community. Excellent. And um, when we talk about the um, economic development, community development falls into that and downtown is certainly taking on a new look. The geography has changed quite a bit in just the short time I've been in Greensboro. So can you tell, tell us the significance of what changes are underway and what we can expect to come? Sure. Downtown Greensboro has come a very far way in a relatively long time. Uh, my wife and I attended college at UNCG and when we were here generally Folks at the college didn't come downtown at all unless it was for uh, clubbing at one or two of the clubs that were actually open downtown. Now downtown you find everyone from all races, all socioeconomic statuses, and you get a good sense of vibrancy and that Greensboro is in fact having a renaissance uh, both downtown and elsewhere. So it's great to be places like this, Labauer Park, uh, which is a terrific place for families. Uh, there are places downtown that are places for just adults, leave the kids at home with a sitter. And so it's wonderful to be a part of a city that's growing and prospering. 
Nice. And I've heard other people share your same sentiment. They moved away after they finished their undergrad and they've come back 10 or 12 years later and they say it's a completely different city. That's right. And it's great to be a part of a city that's growing and really starting to look forward and be strategic in its decisions about how to drive job growth and quality of life. And so, you know, there's no better example than this park, which is the product of a wonderful gift from Carolyn LeBauer, a $10 million gift to the city. And it's something we're all able to enjoy. We're really able to also use it as a crown jewel to showcase as we uh, give our best effort to attract really job developers and companies to our city. Yes. And I think it's having a tremendous success. I agree, and this is an example of what we call the public-private partnering, and we certainly benefit on the city side from not having to put our own dollars into this. That's right. I mean, Greensboro has really focused on and been the beneficiary of a number of public-private partnerships, where essentially the private sector, to a large degree, working with the city, funds the development of projects such as LaBauer Park and the Tanger Performing Arts Center. And the city is actually the beneficiary and we receive the asset for a fraction of the price and we as a community are able to benefit using that asset, whether it be for quality of life reasons or for attracting uh, jobs and employers. And so it's, it's a blessing to be in a community that is so giving and so focused on really being the best it can possibly be for itself. And speaking of being the best and, and forward thinking, as you have defined the city of Greensboro, um, obviously the hot button to issue facing many large cities would be police community relations. From a council perspective, how would you describe the unique approach the city of Greensboro has taken with respect to this issue? I think almost every city, really every city in our country, has areas to improve in terms of police community relations. And so it's really, you know, you're dealt the hand that you're dealt. And these issues have been a part of uh, policing in America for decades. They're not going to change overnight. But here in Greensboro, our police department and our city leadership are really committed to um, taking a strategic look at things so that we can improve them. So at the end of the day, we're the ones winning at the poker table. And so our police department has been very active, really the leaders in the state on issues of public safety and accountability and transparency. Uh, the city of Greensboro, I'm proud to say earlier this year, was the first city to adopt a policy that provides for the release of body-worn camera footage to the public, which is something that's instrumental in increasing transparency and accountability. Uh, both for the officers who are on the camera as well as those members of the public. In many respects, video doesn't lie. Uh, the police has also been leaders in the area of training for uh, anti-bias based policing. You know, the first in the state, uh, one of only a few in the state that currently do it. Greensboro trains other cities how, how to do it and get it right. So while there's areas for improvement, uh, our city has been proactive and I think we're well positioned to, to get this right. And I think we are actually gaining uh, the awareness on a national front. Our police department, our police chief, going to the nation's capital to speak with a presidential committee on these very issues. Th that's right, and I think it's really a demonstration of both the police's leadership as well as the leadership of city council on these issues. The reality is that they're very tough issues. Uh, they're, they're fraught with peril, but I think as city leaders in a police department, the key is that you focus on developing a solution that's best for the community. And I think that our leadership, both on the police uh, as well as in the community, are focused on finding solutions to these long-term problems. Uh, about a year ago, we were on the cover of the New York Times as a result of uh, disparities in traffic stops. Our police didn't sulk in that bad news or bad press, that bad information. It focused on developing solutions to reach a more fair outcome that didn't undermine public safety. And we were well on our way to doing that. And I, I feel good about the position that the city is in. And I think what really helps to drive those points forward and make it useful to our citizenship is the fact that we actually invite people who are part of the community to be part of the discussion with some of these very special committees and boards and civil liberties as one of those areas where we now have a resolution that talks about profiling specifically and how the city will approach that and a lot of communities aren't willing to talk about it much less look at how to put policy in place to address it yeah it's very important to develop strong relationships with members of the community so here in greensboro there are a number of different ways these conversations can happen and people can participate. Um, 
we're fortunate that we had a number of members of the community that really worked hand in hand with the police on these topics for for probably half a decade or at least the past several years. And recently, uh, Greensboro became one of a few municipalities uh, in the state and elsewhere to pass a policy that prohibits certain profiling, including racial profiling. And it really stands in a leadership position in terms of prohibiting this conduct that's otherwise allowed, but really isn't effective, and it's just flat out not fair. So, you know, both in terms of addressing systemic problems as well as holding persons accountable for their good behavior and their bad behavior, Greensboro is a leader. And speaking of which, the body-worn camera issue that we were talking about earlier is going to take a very different turn. How do you see due process playing out as far as the city's ability to even show this, this video in the future? Greensboro, we adopted the state's first policy on the release of body-worn camera footage. Uh, subsequently, the state enacted a law that's a little bit different than ours and makes the release a little more arduous than it was under the city's policy. I think there are hopefully going to be opportunities to work with the state to improve that policy further such that the city uh, can have some input as to whether or not footage should be released. I think ultimately, you know, we have a number of elected officials, primarily judges here, who may have to make those ultimate calls. And as an attorney, I have the ultimate confidence that they'll make the right call. I do think, it, however, it's important that they have all of the input. And I think city council and residents, by and large, not just those depicted on the video, should have an opportunity to have their say uh, on the topic. So I think this is the first step. Um, there are going to be opportunities for improvement, I hope, and Greensboro City Council, I know, is going to work with the General Assembly and do its best to increase transparency such that it's in line with the policy we adopted earlier this year. Okay. Well, thank you, Councilman Outling. You've given us some insights on what to expect as far as downtown and its continued development, um, what to look forward to as far as economic development across the city from a job standpoint, and how we can kind of sit still on the sidelines and see what the state does and some of the decisions that they're going to make in terms of police and community relations and bringing it all together. But knowing that we're in the forefront is always a good thing and something our citizens should be proud of. Well, thank, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.